Hey, welcome back to Danford Golf. Today we're going to talk about uh, basically irons. We're going to talk about what iron is best for you. Not specifically on how to hit the irons, but we're going to take a look at all the Callaway products that uh, we had in the Pro Shop, and we're going to help you figure out which iron is best for your game, because uh, they can make a huge difference, all right? So make sure you subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it when you subscribe. Uh, if you hit the little bell button right next to the subscribe button, you'll see all our future videos. And we always appreciate your thumbs up also. That way more viewers can see our videos and they can see which iron they should actually be using. Uh, and if you have any comments or questions about irons down below, uh, I will get to those also. All right, so the first thing we have to do when we talk about irons is you need to understand that there's kind of two different types of irons as far as how they are created. All right, so you're gonna have a iron that is forged all right so like this blade here it is forged which means it's basically made out of one solid piece of metal all right for a long time that was considered to be the most consistent as far as ball striking uh, it was just going to help you hit the ball the same distance if you hit in the same spot more consistently if you say that so if you hit in the middle a hundred times it would be within five yards over that hundred times. So that was the idea behind Fords. They were supposed to be considered more consistent over time. Uh, that, I would say that was a good idea maybe 20 years ago. All right, that has changed recently as our technology increases and gets better and better. All right, then you have a club like this. This is a cast club, which means basically they took two pieces of metal, they cast it and put it together, all right, to make one club, all right. And that was always considered less consistent because it was cast, so there might have been like, I don't know, like an air bubble or maybe something small in between, so it would kind of jump off the face sometimes, sometimes come off dead. All right, so a lot of the times the cast clubs weren't considered as good as forged clubs. Today, you don't really need a, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference really. They're pretty much the same thing. They're just created a little bit differently. So if you think you have to have a forged club, you don't necessarily need to. Forge clubs, I think, are also usually more expensive than cast clubs. Uh, but either way, they might sound just a little bit differently, but that's one of the reasons why you'll probably try out a forged and a cast, and you'll see which one you like the most, all right? But if you're looking for, to always have a forged club, you don't need to, okay? Cast clubs are just as consistent today as the forge clubs. Our next thing that you're going to look at is the irons that are in the golf clubs. All right? A lot of clubs you're going to have like a uniflex, <laughs> which doesn't really mean a whole lot except that it's supposed to work for somebody with a, a regular to a, uh, like a fast swing. Uh, if you have a club that says uniflex in it, uh, you should probably go and look at something different all right? because it shouldn't flex the same for different swing speeds. So. If you are a senior, so we'll talk to seniors first, and your club head speed is really like 80 or it's starting to drop, right? a lot of the times we've always had steel. So it's kind of the same concept as forge versus cast. Steel was always considered more consistent when it came to the flex point and the overall shaft strength. All right? Once again, technology has gotten better, so you can play shafts that are graphite because they're just as consistent as they if you'd come across a steel shaft today right the big difference with a graphite shaft is it is going to be lighter right so you're going to be able to swing it faster so if you're looking to generate a little bit more club head speed to increase your distance and you're a senior and you're starting to lose some of that club head speed get rid of the steel that you got in there and get some graphite shafts because that's really going to help you Right? We always want to hit the ball further, better, and then graphite, it's just lighter, and it won't hurt your hands quite as much, too, if, in case you have like arthritis in your hands, because it takes some of the vibration out of the golf club. All right, continuing with shafts, uh, some other things that you can do. I don't know if Callaway or Titleist does this. I know Ping does it, or at least they used to. If you do have arthritis in your hands, or if you just don't want to feel the vibrations as much, they can put little dampeners in your shaft. Uh, which will kind of take some of the vibration out of the shaft. Uh, I think that's something that you can request from Ping. I don't know if the other club manufacturers do that or not. Uh, but when it comes to flex, all right, flex is probably one of the most important things when it comes to you selecting your irons. 
all right? So if we are looking at somebody who swings a stiff flex, all right, their club head speed should range somewhere between 90 and 100, all right? Probably closer to the 90 or so, all right? If you start getting above 100, which probably would only happen with like a three iron or something longer, all right? If you're looking at like a driver, over 100 is usually you can turn into an X flex, all right? 80 or 90, 200 is a stiff. And then of course we go to a regular, if it's 80 to 90, all right? And you can get different stiffnesses. So you can get like a stiff shaft that is a little bit weaker. That is something that you can do, all right? So it doesn't have to be one thing or another. And then of course, if you go a little bit slower, 70, 80, you're gonna get like a light flex or a senior flex. A lot of times actually, you can get like a ladies flex and it'll be a little bit stiffer than a, a senior flex if that's something that you want to look at. All right, and of course ladies clubs tend to be a little bit shorter uh, than men's clubs. So if you go buy a ladies set just because of the shaft, just be aware that it's going to be shorter than a regular men's size. So you came to figure out which club was best for your golf swing and helped you be most consistent. But before we get there, we're going to talk about uh, swing weight of the golf clubs. So. I usually play clubs, uh, they're, called, they're considered D4, which is pretty heavy, which means the head is extremely heavy, so you can feel the club head a little bit more. Now you can get it much lighter if you want to, so you can get it like a D1, I think you can even get it into the C's if you don't want to feel the head quite as much. All right, But I like to feel the head, so I tend to go a little bit heavier. This is something that you can also request when you order clubs. That's if you've, if you're somebody who really likes your irons now, but they're just really outdate and they're a D3, you can request that that manufacturer creates them again to be that D3 weight, okay? It doesn't have to be something brand new, All right? And then you can also request how heavy the club is itself, like what the grams are, All right? I don't really have the tools or anything like that to, to tell you all of that right now today, uh, but I just know that I like, I like D4, D3 is about as low as I go because I like to feel the head because it helps me figure out where the club is in my golf swing a little bit more. So that might be one more factor that you consider, all right? So we have covered forge versus cast. We've covered st uh, different stiffnesses that you can deal with with the shaft. And now we've covered swing weight. So we are gonna move on to what club is best for your game. All right, now what you've all been waiting for is which club is best for your golf swing. So we're gonna start with game improvement clubs first. All right, game improvement club just basically means usually the face is a little bit larger, all right, and the cavity on the back of the club is a little bit larger, okay? As I do all these game improvement clubs and as we go to more advanced, all right, I'll put a little list on the side of the screen here. Uh, that's the kind of the golf digest. They call them like a gold list. Basically, that's their best option that they after they've tested what is best for like the game improvement, stuff like that. So you can always check those out also if you're wondering what club is best for you because here at Palm Valley, we just carry Callaway because we're kind of a Phil Mickelson uh, property, as you wish to say. So XR, it might be about a year old, but all right, but it's got the larger cavity, all right, and this is also that uh, cast club head, okay? Uh, then we will go to the next one. All right, the next club, all right, these are more of the recent ones. These are the uh, Callaway Apex. All right, you got this DCB club. All right, once again, it has a little bit larger of a cavity back. All right, this face isn't gonna be quite as large, all right, but it is still a game improvement club. The big thing with game improvement, in case you missed it, all right, we want the sweet spot to be bigger. And as you get rid of the cavity, the sweet spot becomes smaller. So game improvement clubs are fine or it, it doesn't really matter. Whatever helps you hit the ball a little bit more consistent each time. So if you need a bigger face, that's fine. If you need more of a cavity back, that's fine. Okay, the next club in the series just goes to the regular apex, all right? So you'll see that the cavity has become less, all right? The, say, the face is gonna be about the same size as what you see with the DCB club, all right? But the cavity is just going to be a little bit smaller. And just again, as you improve with clubs, all right, make sure the shaft is correctly, because I would probably assume that most game improvement clubs, the shafts are gonna be a little bit weaker, all right? And of course, if you get graphite, it will be more expensive. So be aware of that, and then just check out the list on the side 
which club is best for you. So this regular Apex here, this is more for, I would say, the advanced player. It's not going to be a game improvement club anymore, uh, but it's going to be for somebody who is a little bit more skilled at hitting it in the middle, okay? Let's say somebody who breaks uh, 85 consistently. Unless you're a great ball striker and you hit the ball in the middle every time with your irons, then you can get something a little bit better. And if you're still shooting high scores, then you should probably fix your driver or your putty. And then finally we go to the club that has no cavity back, all right? We call these blades. There's no cavity back. They are always usually forged, all right? And they are usually more expensive also. Uh, the sweet spot is very small on these, all right? A lot of people get uh, blades because they feel like they can move the ball better and they feel like it feels better when they hit it, okay? Um, in my case, I'll give you a quick story. I, when I was a sophomore in high school, I thought I was a really good ball striker. I hit a lot of greens, 13, 14 greens around. So I was a pretty good ball striker and I decided I should get blades. And so I got the MP33s. In case you're a golfer, you'll know what those are. They're awesome looking, all right? Uh, the only problem was when I hit it off center, it didn't go anywhere and I was playing in a tournament and I had about a 170 yard carry over a lake and I thought I hit it right in dead center of the flag face going right the flag and it finished like 15 yards short of the green right in the middle of the lake and then the next day I went out and got some tailor maids that had a cavity back because I wanted that forgiveness all right so my advice to you is if you are thinking about getting a blade this is what I want you to do and this is what we're gonna see most guys on tour do for their blades all right they are gonna have a blade for basically a pitching wedge nine eight seven maybe a seven all right and then what they do from there is they start to taper it back all right so six five four they go to something with more of a cavity all right three two irons are gonna have even a larger cavity all right this is probably if you are a really good player or if you just love how a blade looks that would be my suggestion is kind of taper it back start with something with a blade and eventually taper it back all right most guys on tour are going to do that. You'll see some like a Tiger Woods. I know he always played like straight, straight blades. Um, and then you'll see some of the other really good ball strikers on tour. But then you've, I just remember seeing a guy on, who played game improvement clubs and he was on tour. All right, he figured he wanted the forgiveness. I'm all about the forgiveness, all right? You're not gonna hit it dead center every time. So take some of that forgiveness when you hit it offline so you don't finish 15 yards short in the middle of the lake. All right, and then um, I would say game improvement, then middle line, all right? I mean, don't make it harder than it has to be. Give yourself that. And of course, go out and try them, all right? Go to your local Golf Galaxy or PGA Tour or Super Score or whatever you have around you. Try them out, see what they feel like, all right? See if you like the sound, see if you like what it looks like from looking down at it. Like I like to see a little bit thicker line on the top of my club. I don't like to see it really narrow, all right? I don't like to look at a blade three iron because it looks like a tiny butter knife and I'm like, how am I gonna hit that in the middle of the face? All right, so I like something that's just a little bit easier to hit. I'm totally okay with that. I still hit a bunch of greens, uh, hit it off course or offline a little bit or off the center. I know I'm not gonna be too far off, so at least I can chip and get up and down. I don't wanna finish in the middle of a lake, okay? So take that forgiveness. I hope these help you figure out what club is best for you. Remember, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, all right? From forge to cast, the club head to swing weight, all right? And then figuring out what club looks the best to you and what sounds the best and what feels the best. I hope this video helps you out today. Uh, thanks for watching and make sure you look at those lists. If you have any questions about clubs, I'll do my best to answer those as well.